center, shall we play it off like tackle? Straight ahead. Oh. Keep moving. Please, Miss Darling, may I have your autograph? What? Just sign it yourself, lady. She ain't learned to write yet. Hi, Arita. Glad to see you. All right. Let's make a good one, kid. Who knows? Maybe you'll get a Hollywood contract. She ain't interested. Who says I'm not interested? Look. Pass this, Roy. Oh, that's solid, kid. Hold it. Fine. Beat it or I'll take that thing away from you. Now, look, pal, let's cooperate. You arrest him, I snap him. Let's be friendly. Come on, Lieutenant. Maybe we can get you a movie job, too. Yeah, as a stand-in for Dumbo. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Miss Darling, we just have a souvenir. Souvenir, eh? Oh! Come on. A lily, a lily. Uh, hello there. Yeah, the judge had to call a recess. Miss Darling refused to take the stand, looking like Lady Godiva. Yeah, I'll call yeah, you back later. Yeah, the theater's assistant, Jeff McGonagall, was responsible for the disturbance. McGonagall. McGonagall. I'm singing it for him. McGonagall, Bill, the sailor. Da, 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 Looks like you caused some excitement, Roy. Can I help it if that dame was camera shy? Shy like a two-ton bomb. You got the picture with you? Oh, yeah, and a lily, too. Well, you see it. Finest action shots since Steve took a Brody from the Brooklyn Bridge. Mm. How much will you take for it? Sorry, just sold it for 50 smackers. That's the trouble with you freelance photographers. You're also mercenary. Who's mercenary? I just happen to be crazy about money, that's all. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? My stomach. I eat too fast. What do you do that for? Why do I do it for? I'm crazy about my carbonate. Do I know why I'm doing it? If I knew what I was doing, would I do it? Darling woman's going on the stand. Oh, here we go. Say, who do you think did it? I don't know. I'm very open-minded about these things. Maybe the judge did it. You never can tell. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help God? I do. State your name. Rita Darling. Please be seated. Miss Darling? What's your business or occupation? I'm the star singer at the Dolphin Club. Mm -hmm. and where do you live? Do I have to give my telephone number to, Judge? Why, yes, I think we should have your address and telephone number. I live at the Mason Towers, and my number is Longacre 54721. Did you know the deceased, Holly Forsyth? Very well. When was the last time you saw Mr. Forsyth? The night before he was killed. Where did you see him? At the Dolphin Club. Mr. Darling, would you tell the court in your own words exactly what took place on that occasion? Sure. I was in the middle of it happened, it's over, let's forget it. That's my specialty number. When, ha I mean, Mr. Forsyth walked in with Miss Hubbard. Well, like I say, I knew Mr. Forsyth. So, after my number, I went over to his table and sat down. He introduced Miss Hubbard to me as his fiancée. Well, you could have knocked me over with a marshmallow, because the last time I'd seen him, he hadn't said anything about being engaged. Anyway, that made me sort of mad, springing a thing like that on me the way he did. So I turned to Miss Hubbard, and I asked her if she knew what an awful chance she was taking marrying a man like Harley Forsythe. And what did Miss Hubbard say to that? She didn't say anything. She just got up and left. Why? I guess she didn't like sitting at the same table with the help. What did Mr. Forsythe do? He got up and followed her. And that's the last time you saw Mr. Forsythe alive? Yes, though a couple of hours later he called me on the telephone. What did he want? He said he wanted to see me. Well, go on. Well, I couldn't see him that night, so I arranged to see him the following evening. Where? At his apartment. Miss Darling, would you please tell the court what happened on that evening? Well, just as I reached Mr. Forsythe's apartment, I met Miss Hubbard coming out of the door. She was crying and looked very upset. When I passed her, she didn't recognize me. Uh, then what did you do? I rang the bell of the apartment, but there was no answer. Then I tried the door and found it unlocked, so I went in. I saw Mr. Forsythe lying on the floor. What did you do then? I called the superintendent of the building, and he phoned the police. Miss Darling, at what time did you pass Miss Hubbard coming out of the deceased apartment? At about 9.35. How did you know that was the time? Because my appointment was for 9.30, and I remember being five minutes late. Thank you, Miss Darling. Just a moment, Miss Darling. Where did Mr. Forsyth live? At the Montreal Manor on 77th Street, Central Park West. Mm -hmm. You say you knew the deceased very well? What do you mean by very well? Oh, he liked me, and I liked him. 
We were good friends. Would you say you were more than good friends? What kind of a crack is that? You were in love with Holly Forsythe, weren't you? Why? Answer yes or no. Were you in love with Holly Forsythe? Why, no. Yet you accepted an invitation to his apartment on the night he was murdered. Yes. Thank you. That's the people's case. All right. I should like to call Mr. Henry Randolph. Raise your right hand. The you sound is for to tell us who told who the truth of God? I do. State your name. Uh, Henry Randolph. Be seated, please. Mr. Randolph, what is your business or occupation? I am a butler in the employ of Mr. Robert Jason. Mm, and where does Mr. Jason live? At the Paris Towers on East 12th Street. Were you working for Mr. Jason on the night of May 17th? Uh, yes, sir. Do you know the defendant? Uh, yes, sir. Miss Hubbard has the apartment next to Mr. Jason. Did you see the defendant on that night? Uh, yes, sir. Will you tell the jury what time you saw her? At 7.15. How do you place the exact time? You see, sir, I was expecting Mr. Jason home at 7 o'clock. So every time I heard the elevator door open down the hall, I went to the front door. And each time I would look at my watch. I recall that when I saw Miss Hubbard into her apartment, it was 7.15. To your knowledge, did the defendant leave her apartment again that night? Uh, yes, sir, at about 9 o'clock. Could she have left her apartment between 7.15 and 9 without you hearing her? Uh, no, sir. You see, the only entrances and exits to the apartment open out onto the hall. Thank you, Mr. Randolph. That will be all. Thank you, sir. Mr. Randolph, how long have you known these facts? For almost three months. Then why didn't you come forward with this information earlier? I didn't want to become involved. A woman was on trial for her life, and you didn't want to become involved? Uh, yes, sir. Why? Well, I... Uh... Why? I didn't think it was any of my business. But you've made it your business since then. Why this sudden change of heart? I kept thinking about the case until I couldn't sleep. It preyed on my mind. My conscience troubled me. Oh, your conscience. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Then tell the court whether your testimony was solicited by the attorney for the defense or whether you volunteered it. I volunteered it. If that's the case, why did you go to Mr. Logan with the information instead of the district attorney? Well, I thought it would be all right. Mr. Randolph, when you stepped on this witness stand, you solemnly swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Answer yes or no. Did you see Miss Lillian Hubbard entering her apartment at 7.15 p.m. on the night of May 17th? Well, I... I... Answer my question! Well, I... I'm not sure. Anybody got any smelling salts? Doctor. The witness. He's dead, Your Honor. Extra, extra. Read all about it. Witness dies on stand. Please hunt for you to kill extra. Extra. Read all about it. Witness dies on stand. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your radio newscaster bringing you the latest developments in this afternoon's sensational courtroom murder in the Hubbard case. The police, after a thorough search of every person present, have still not found the knife which killed the unfortunate butler, Henry Randolph. Good night, George. Good night. Good night, Jim. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Thank you. Why, that courtroom is drafty. Yeah, it is. Well, good night. Good night, ladies. Good night, good night ladies. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, with all that excitement this afternoon, I think I'm taking a cold. <laughs> Good night, Sheriff. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh. Thank you. Hey, Sheriff. 
What's chances of my getting a room by myself tonight? The penthouse, Mr. Shane, or would you prefer the bridal suite? Uh, honest, that guy snores so much, I haven't had a wink of sleep in the last three nights. Try counting sheep jumping over a fence. I did that, and by last night, the sheep were so tired they couldn't jump the fence. Here. Take one of these capsules. You won't know what hit you for 10 hours. Uh, look, uh, I'm sort of immune to drugs. Make it three. Hmm? Three? What do you want to do, commit suicide? I'll give you two. It's more than enough. I'm warning you, they're plenty powerful. Yeah, thanks. Good night, Sheriff. Good night. Remember, don't discuss this case with anyone. No. Please close that window. Oh, sure. Still, I do wish you'd try to remember that. No. Uh, uh, uh. Thank you. Oh, that's all right. It was my fault for opening the window. Say, uh, Sperry, you know, I've got just the thing for your cold. Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. Shane. There you are. These capsules. Just take them both. By morning, you won't know what hit you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Michael. Uh, you don't mind if I call you Michael, do you? Well, it is a little familiar, but I'll let it pass. Here, I'll pull down your bedspread for you. Well, that's more than my wife does for me at home. Oh, I'm very thoughtful about those things. You know, Michael, I know it's wrong to talk about the case, but I don't believe Lillian Hubbard's guilty. Sperry, I think you've got something there. You do? Absolutely. Well. It's my guess that someone killed the butler because they were afraid that his testimony would acquit her. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> the coroner says that Forsyth was killed at 7.30. Now, the butler says at 7.15, he saw Miss Hubbard going into her apartment. So, in that case, you can see that it would be quite impossible if she lived at East 12th Street and Forsyth lived at West 77. That length of time would be impossible for her to get uptown so far and across town. And down will come, baby. Radel and about a set of tires. Keep the voice down, will you? How'd you find out about this knife? A little bird told me. Well, at least she didn't go to the police about it. When the reporter's got the inside on a good story, she doesn't go to the police with it. Check. As soon as I solve the case, I'll give you an exclusive. Oh, no, you don't. On this one, I go right along with you and all the way. Mm -mm, no dice. 
Now listen here, my... Please be quiet, will you? I've taken enough chances as it is. I go I... or else. Do I go or don't I? No. I'll scream. Okay, you win. Towers. Why? To find out why Randolph was killed. You don't mind my asking all these questions, do you? Oh, of course not. How else are you going to learn anything? Still haven't told me why you hid the knife. Have you ever served for two solid weeks on a jury? No, but I imagine it's very exciting. Oh, you do. Well, it isn't. And besides, I don't believe that Hubbard Dame is guilty. And who's going to pay Mr. Shane to prove it? And believe it or not, that's the one thing I hadn't figured out. It shows the age of chivalry is not dead. Oh, is that so? What about that time in the Jackson case when I asked you to marry me? That wasn't chivalry. That was blackmail. You just wanted to get me off the case. Well, I... Well, anyhow, it almost worked. By the way, aren't you supposed to be locked up in a hotel room? Shh. I am locked up in a hotel room. This is only the spirit of Michael Shane you're talking to. Okay, spirit. But the first time you pull anything funny, I turn you over to the police. And in the flesh. Uh, yeah. Now, don't forget, you just do the listening. And, and I'll, I'll do, do the talking. Where have I heard that before? Oh, uh, hello. We're, uh, we're investigating the Randolph case. More police. Come in, please. Thanks. Sorry to disturb you, but uh, is Mr. Jason at home? Mr. Jason has been in South America for the last two months. Well, then... Suppose you let us take a look at Mr. Randolph's room. Right this way. I thought I made it clear that I was to do the talking. Clear to you, but not to me. This is Mr. Randolph's room. That's his bed, and those are all his books. Poor Henry was a great one for reading, all right. Say, tell me, miss, how long did you know Mr. Randolph? Going on almost three years. Well, did he have any enemies? Not that I know of. But a frightfully strange thing happened this afternoon. Yeah, what happened this afternoon? Those other police that were here said he'd spent time in prison. Yeah? Well, why well, did, did he... tell you anything else? No, no. Uh, pardon me, ma'am, but do they always have women policemen on a murder case? Huh. Well, yes, yes. You see, I cover the various cases from the woman's angle. Sort of cherche la femme. Isn't that right, Miss Taylor? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Find the woman. Now, tell me, do you know if Mr. Randolph was friendly with any woman in particular? Oh, well, you might say, and we was friendly with me. He used to take me up to the cinema, dancing and all that sort of thing. Of course, that was before I knew he'd been in prison. It just goes to show you a body never knows. Well, do you know of anyone who would have had a reason for killing Mr. Randolph? No, he was a lonely man. In fact, he always used to say, he who travels alone travels farthest. I don't know where he thought he was going. He was only a butler. Say, did anybody ever come here to visit Mr. Randolph? No. No. Uh, except that Mr. Logan, the lawyer for Miss Hubbard. Handsome, ain't he? He come to see us both after she'd been arrested for that dreadful murder. Oh, excuse me, I expect that's more police. <laughs> Police department. Judy, did you hear those coppers come out of this elevator? No. But Randolph said he could hear the elevator door every time it opened or closed. That's right, he did. Why do you think he said he heard it if he didn't? I don't know. That, my dear, is one of those little things we're going to have to find out. 
You know what kind of a knife this is? No. That's a throwing knife. How do you know? Because of the way it's balanced. And because only an expert knife thrower would have been accurate enough to aim at and kill a man at that distance. I wonder how a girl goes about meeting a knife thrower in this town. Well, if you're really interested, I'll show you. I want to meet one night sure not 14. You want to quit? Swell. No, I don't want to quit, but can't we look for something easy, like a needle in a haystack? Hello, Pop. Hello, Mike. How's everything? Okay. Mmm. Okay. Hello, Billy. Hello, Mike. I think it's going. No longer any place in this world for the little man. I wonder what happens if he misses. Give him another chance. You mean they give him another blonde? How much longer is this act on? About ten minutes. About ten minutes, huh? Hey, Judy, do me a favor, will you? Sure. You stand on guard here and tell me the moment that Telmacchio finishes his act. Why don't you stand on guard? Oh, no, now, Judy. All right, let's flip for it. Hmm? Okay. Heads I win, tails you lose. Tails, you lose. Too bad, Judy. Hey! Why are you always taking advantage of me? Because you make it so easy. Hey, look at this. This proves something, all right. Oh, sure. Tell Mackie oh, and eight million other people are interested in what went on in that courtroom this afternoon. Yeah, I guess that's right. Why don't you stand guard outside like I told you? So you can find an important clue and duck out of the window? No siree. Find a corpse in there. Help me! Louder, Judy. We can't hear you out here. Help me! Help me! Oh! Let me out! Help! Murder! Please! Help! Murder! Mmm. Oh. Rasputin. the address. Phone number? Just a moment, I'll mark it down. Yes. Right away. I knocked a guy cold in my dressing room. Caught him going through my trunk. I'll be back right away. Perhaps 
feels like it belongs to somebody else. What happened? Well, he threw a hatchet at you. Hatchet? Oh, oh yeah, I remember. Say, hey, we're on the right track. He's the killer. What killer? Oh, hello, Pop. What in the world is all this about, anyway? Well, I was sticking my nose into somebody else's business, and I almost got it chopped off, that's all. What are you messing around this trunk for? Well, now, Pop, you don't think I'd do anything illegal, do you? I'm on a case. Case? Yeah. Say, that reminds me. Ain't you on a jury? <laughs> oh, good old Pop. You know, I knew you'd understand. Now, you forget that you've seen me, and I'll cut you in on the reward. But don't forget, a slip of the lip may sink a ship. Oh. Say, where's Tomacchio? Well, he... Oh, he wrote down a phone number and an address. Here, the way he talked, he was arranging to meet someone. Hmm. Say, wait a minute. What are you doing, Pop? We had a mind-reading act here one time. This is the way they brought out their phony spirit writing. I don't get it. Here. Look. Ferry Street. That's on the Lower East Side. Pardon me, Pop. Who are you calling? That's what I'm trying to find out. You mean that passing number might lead to tell Matthew? Yeah. There's no answer. Hello, operator. Could you give me the address of uh, Plaza 59961? I'm sorry, sir. We're not permitted to divulge that information. Yeah, but operator, this is very important. I'm sorry, sir. Look, uh... Mike, for heaven's sakes, at least tell me what you're thinking. Come on, we gotta get out. Mike, where are you going? Oh, yeah, I know. A slip of the lip. Listen, Mike, we can spend half the night looking at warehouses. Why don't we at least try to find out where this man lives? Because, like Annie, he probably doesn't live there anymore. Look, I want you to go into that drugstore and dial Plaza 59961. Well, suppose I get an answer this time. Then try to find out who's on the other end. But if you don't get an answer, don't hang up. Just let the phone ring. Just let the phone ring? That's the idea. Mr. Shane, tell me, how do you think you'd look in white? Better than I would in stripes. Now hurry it up, we're losing time. Okay, but I don't think it makes sense. Hello? Who is this? Mandrake, the magician. Could I interest you in a rocket trip to the moon, Miss Taylor? Mike, where are you? 605 Ferry Street. Okay, I'll be right there.
Put up your hands. Move over there. Okay, buddy, get moving. Now look, Chief. You hide me, get moving. In there. All right. Over there. Now look, I didn't have anything to do with that murder. How'd you know it was murder? Well, anybody can see Shut that. up. Give me the police department. Police department? I want to report a killing. Yeah. At the Acme Storage Company over on Ferry Street. You better make it snappy. I got the guy that did it right here. much more of that. Mike, Mike, I've killed him. No, I don't think so. Nah, he'll be all right here. Give me that gun. Please, now I know I shouldn't have hit him. That's all right. The minimum sentence for assault is three years. I'll come and see you every month. He's gone. license. To be precise, a license to hunt Jack. <laughs> and it's always open season. Well, now that you've seen all of New York's Chinatown, if you step in the bus, our next visit will be Greenwich Village, where we'll see how the Bohemians live. All right, ladies, step up there. Hey, let me have a couple of bucks. I had a hunch this evening was going to start costing me. Hey, uh, bud, just keep the change. All right. Say, you know, you're a real sport, Mike. We must go out more often. Why, sure. When's your next payday? Aren't you afraid of being seen here? Not with you, darling. Check your hat, sir. Oh, yeah, thanks, sugar. <laughs> hey, uh, you got a quarter? You give out with the ration card conversation, and I pay to listen. All I've got's a half. Well, a half's enough, sure. Thank you. You're welcome. I thought you were only supposed to tip them when you pick up your hat. Honey, when they're that cute, I tip them coming and going. Good evening, monsieur. Madame, this way, please. Thanks. What are we doing here? Take a look over there. Forget it. Tears won't get us anywhere. It happened. It's over. 
A glass of water and a toothpick. <laughs> Tourist, you know. Just make it two old fashions, Harry. Yes, sir. But the name is Ollie. I'd rather dance if you don't mind. I'm free and so are you. Let's wander on to pastures new and call it all a silly day. had anything to do with anything. This was on Telmacchio when I found him. He was dead. He was? Mm-hmm. The watchman thought I'd kill him. That was the reason for the fight. To Rita from George? George Dolphin. He's the owner of this club. Let's forget it. Hello, boss. Here, give me that. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna have a little talk with Miss Darling, find out what goes on. Every heart must pay for love. I've discovered since then. And yet I say. Nice big smile. All right? Thank you. Mike, that photographer. What about him? Well, he's been covering the trial. We've got to get out of here before he recognizes you. Judy! How are you? Glad to see you. Are you right? What's new? Just picking up a little extra change. Mind if I sit down? We were just going. Going? You're just getting your drinks. Are you kidding? Stick around and introduce me to your boyfriend. My name is Higgins. Hey, what's playing down there? Hey, my name is Higgins. Roy Higgins. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. Higgins. Haven't I seen your face someplace before? Oh, I doubt it. He's from out of town. He, he's from... from... Uh, Rochester. Rochester? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great little town, that Rochester. You ever up that way, let me know. Why, we've got almost a half a million population. Altitude around 2,000 feet. 15 first-class hotels. I know it. You're a juror. Oh, me? That's it. I knew I've seen that face. You're a juror in the Hubbard trial. Well, you're crazy. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. You're... Here, have a drink. What's your name, Mr... Uh... Uh, Smith. Uh, uh, John Smith. John K. Smith, that's it, John K. Smith. Mr. Smith is my fiancé. Congratulations, Smith. Say, if you're a juror, what are you doing out and around? Well, he isn't a juror, No, Roy. no, not at all. Say, uh, honey, would you like to dance? No, Still thanks, I... You don't mind if we dance, do you, Roy? Hey! Sorry, Higgins, you should have warned me. Got any more friends you'd like to have me meet? It'd have been okay if you hadn't handed out that phony name. John K. Smith. What does the K stand for? Cluck? Ah, uh, never mind. We'll get rid of him. You know, I used to be quite a dancer. Ouch! I'm sorry. How long ago? Well, they've changed the rules since the Charleston, you know. Oh. It's not my fault. <laughs> Pardon me, will you? Walk around. Oh, oh, here he comes. Oh, I'm sorry. We uh, came late. He's making up for lost time. <laughs> what is this? The congregation? Move around, will you, kid? Hey. You cover me. Hey! Tovarich! <laughs> <laughs> now, don't I look like my name was Smith? Hmm? I bet you could sell a mean cough drop. Say, I want you to take care of Higgins while I talk to Rita. Well, where will I meet you? Out in front in five minutes. And have a cab ready. Go ahead. Hello, Miss Darling. What's the idea of busting in here? 
Well, you see, I'm a special investigator on the Hubbard murder case. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Well, you'll have to see my lawyer. Could your lawyer tell me whether this brooch belonged to you? Hmm? Where'd you get this? I'm asking you a question. Does that belong to you? No. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Why should I lie to you? Well, I don't know. You were in love with Forsythe. You had as good a reason as Lillian Hubbard to kill him. That's not true. Weren't you seeing him regularly before Hubbard came along? I wouldn't put it that way, buddy. Oh, hello, Mr. Dolphin. Who are you? It's all right, George. Just Shut up. Him. I said, who are you? Oh, uh, my name's Smith. I'm a special investigator in the Hubbard case. Oh, keyhole snooper, huh? Yeah, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. I'm not interested. Did you give this brooch to Miss Darling? That's none of your business. Now, go on, beat it. Oh, now, George, don't be... Go that. on, beat it before I have you thrown out. Mm -hmm. Have it your own way. I'll be seeing you. It might interest you to know that the man who killed Randolph in the courtroom was found dead. This brooch was found on his body. What are you trying to do? Pin this whole thing on me? What kind of a crack is that? You know you threatened to bump off Forsyth. Your memory's too good. camera shy for once. Say, if that guy got my picture, I'm sunk. Did you get to see Rita? Hmm? Oh, yeah. It's her brooch, all right. Did she say it was? No, but it won't be hard to prove that. All we have to do is find out where it came from. And how do we do that, Mr. Braden? Well, first we identify the jeweler's trademark. Then we locate the jeweler. Mag, do you really think Rita might have killed Forsythe? Well, we know somebody was afraid of Randolph's testimony. And we also know that it was Rita who pinned Forsyth's murder on Lillian Hubbard. So, being afraid a surprise witness might explode her story, she took no chances and hired Tell Mackie for the killing job. Maybe. But why in the world would she tell such a story in the first place? One, to pin it on someone else. And two, to explain her presence in the vicinity of Forsyth's apartment on the night he was killed. She must have paid Tell Mackie plenty for the job. Probably paid him off with this brooch. That was why it was on him when I found him. New York Bulletin, keep smiling. I want you to yank this story here and throw in this one about the murdered knife thrower. Run a picture of the watchman who was hit over the head along with his description of the guy he picked up in the warehouse. Right, Maury. Hi, Mr. Morrison. Got the picture of the year right here. One of the jurors in the Hubbard trial. That's nothing. We got a picture of all 12 of them. Take a look at that. Yeah, but you ain't got Shane. This character right here all by himself. All by himself at 1 o'clock in the morning where he shouldn't be. You wouldn't kid me, Roy. The Globe offered me 100 bucks for it. Okay, print her up. If you've got it, I'll go 150. Mr. Morrison, you just made yourself a deal. Here it is, Mr. Arno. Yes. The design is my own. In fact, I may have a copy of the drawing here. I remember he especially wanted something in the shape of a dolphin. I had to study a number of drawings. Dura, the German artist, had several excellent ones. Ah, here we are. You may observe that I borrowed rather freely from Dura in my design of the brooch. Would you be willing to testify in court that you sold this brooch to Mr. Dolphin? If you thought it necessary, yes. Could you arrange to be in court tomorrow morning at 10? Yes. Oh, that's fine. Come on, Judy, we'll have to go. Thanks very much, Mr. Not Dolphin. at all. I'm glad to be of some service. Good night. Good night. Well, that pins the murder right on George Dawson. Yeah, I think Arno knows more than he's told us. What do you mean? Say. Wasn't Forsyth once married to Arno's daughter? Oh, that's right. I remember now. Well, there was quite a scandal at the divorce trial. Yeah, I thought so. Now, look, I want you to go down to your newspaper morgue and dig up all the dope you can on Forsyth. Well, what are you going to do? Uh, I have to write a letter. 
A letter? Yeah, a letter to a friend. I'll meet you in front of the Manor Apartments. That's where Logan lives. Logan? Oh, the lawyer who's defending Lincoln Hubbard. Yeah, that's right. Okay, but I hope you know what you're doing. Don't worry about me. A lily, a lily, I got myself a lily. Well, here we are, Mr. Morrison. There's your drawer, as large as life. Now there's a little matter of 150. Who's the girl? Her face seems familiar. Why, well, well, she's your star reporter. Hiya, Roy. Hiya, Judy. Glad to see you. What are you doing in this picture? Just chasing down one of the biggest stories of the year. Uh, do you mind if I take a look? Go on, take a peek. <laughs> she gave me a routine of guys, a fiancé from Rochester. That don't go with me. I've been around. When you're a freelance photographer, you gotta use your noodle. And if you need a good guy... Hey! Hey! That's sabotage! What's the idea? I just don't want to see myself scooped, that's all. Mm, I knew you were in cahoots with that guy. Give me the developing room. Will you tell me what this is all about, or would it be asking too much? The man in that picture is Michael Shane, private investigator. We're working on the Hubbard case together. Hello, Tony. Hold it a second. Will you please tell him to get rid of that negative before Higgins gets down there? Tony, get rid of that negative Higgins brought in. You heard me. Get rid of it. Oh, thanks a lot. Tomorrow morning, the bulletin will make newspaper history. Miss Taylor, we make history or you're fired. Mike. Arnold's daughter, Cynthia, was married to Forsyth six years ago, up to the time she committed suicide. Yeah, but why did she commit suicide? Well, she left a note saying she couldn't stand Forsyth running around with other women. Oh. Do you think Arnold's mixed up in this? I don't know, but we'll find out about that tomorrow morning in court. Here, take this. Why are you giving this to me? I want you to give that to Logan. Why don't you give it to him yourself? Because if he sees me, he'll tell the judge and I'll go to jail. Is that clear? Mm. Good. Now look. I want you to tell Logan about everything that we found out tonight. Well, suppose he won't listen Don't to me. Don't worry, he'll listen to you. Tell him that this is his one big chance to clear Lillian Hubbard, and that you've got enough dope to pin the whole business on Rita Darling. Okay. Go to work. running around here? No. Say, what's the idea of the fifth column work? What kind of fifth column work? I'm a newspaper photographer. Oh, yeah? So it's when you fall around and sell for pictures. Look, you're an elevator operator, ain't you? Yeah. Well, come on, elevate. Operate. Come on. Elevate. Get moving. Just make it five. Hey, aren't you new here? I've been used coming here, but by humanity, some damn fool leave water running in top, make it just like the unstunned flood. But I tell you, I saw him. Maybe you need new glasses. I thought reporters are crazy, but you photographers take the cake. Good for it. But I wouldn't kid you, sir, if it was seen. And I'm telling you, he couldn't get out of that room without me knowing it. Fourth floor, please. I thought you said five. No, I said four. What's wrong with you? 
You don't understand good American language. Excuse, please. Quizzling. What kind of shenanigans is this? You got me, sure. Sleepwalkers, the hotel's full of them. All right, sister, let's get moving. Uh, uh. Okay. Hey, spell it. Gee, this never happened before. And it'll never happen again. Next time, I'll take my jury to the hotel across the street. You can bet Shane's behind this. Sure, sure. He's standing outside in his sleep, holding us in. How do you like this? A bottleneck. Must be West. Hey, it was the plumber, only it was Shane. There's your man, Sheriff. Oh, yeah? Does he look like a plumber? But I tell you a few, I took a picture of him, I saw in a nightclub. Oh, hello, Sheriff. Say, what's your mind of the hotel on for? Were you out of this room tonight? Well, of course not. Who do you think I am, Superman? Hey. Hey, did he leave the room or not? Hey, Curly, wake up. Hey. It's all right, darling. I'm listening. I hear every word you say. His character's in another world. Hey, Sheriff, thanks for those pills. They were wonderful. Uh, Hey, you, uh, di didn't I meet you somewhere? Yeah, in Rochester. Does that give you any clues? The only place you'd meet this crank would be in the psychopathic ward. Come on, before I throw you in the cooler for disturbing the peace. Come on, come on, get out of here. Good night, Sheriff. Good night. flag of the United States, emblem of the Constitution, and of freedom and justice for all, the 33rd District Court is now in session. The Honorable Robert Walters, Judge Presiding. Be seated, please. It's all right, sweetie pie. I'm up. I'm up. I... Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, before we begin, I wish to say that you are duty-bound not to let the extraordinary events of yesterday afternoon in any way prejudice you one way or the other. A decision of innocence or guilt is decided solely on the basis of the legal testimony presented to this court. The defense will proceed. I'd like to call Mr. George Dolphin to the stand. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. State your name. George Dolphin. Be seated, please. Mr. Dolphin, is the relationship between you and Miss Darling strictly business? We're also very good friends. Did you know the deceased, Harley Forsythe, very well? Well enough not to like him. Did you ever resent his attentions to Miss Darling? Answer yes or no. Did you resent his attentions to Miss Darling? Yes. Do you know a professional knife thrower by the name of Count Edmund Telmacchio? No. I show you a brooch and call your particular attention to an inscription on the back which reads, To Rita from George, and ask you whether or not you gave this brooch to Miss Darling. No, I did not. If Your Honor, please, I should like to have this marked as the defendant's next exhibit for identification. Mr. Clay. Mark it as defendants next in order for identification. Yes, Your Honor. That's all. Your witness. 
No questions. You may step down. Miss Rita Darling. Rita Darling. May I have defendants exhibit K for identification? Miss Darling, is this your brooch? No. Do you know a professional knife thrower by the name of Count Edmund Telmacchio? No. Did you know that Tomacchio was murdered last night and this brooch was found on his person? No. That's all. Your witness. No questions? I request that the witness remain in the courtroom. So ordered. Mr. Sidney Arno. Sidney Arno. Sidney Arno. Mr. Arno, do you know Mr. George Dolphin? Yes. Mr. Dolphin has been a customer of mine for several years. I show you a brooch. Do you recognize it? Yes. I made it for Mr. Dolphin two weeks ago. That's a lie. He never saw me that brooch and he knows it. Mr. Dolphin, if you don't remain quiet, I shall have you removed from the courtroom. All right. All right, but I still tell you he's lying. Your Honor, I offer this brooch in evidence as defendants exhibit K. Thank you, Mr. Arnold, that's all. No questions. Uh, just a minute. Your Honor, with your permission, I'd like to ask the witness a few questions. Proceed. Mr. Arno, do you know a manufacturing jeweler by the name of Hendricks? Yes. Now, is it not a fact that you only designed the brooch and that Mr. Hendricks executed that design for you? Yes. Mr. Hendricks does a great deal of work for me. Thank you. That's all, Your Honor. I now call the defendant, Miss Lillian Hubbard. Miss Hubbard, do you recall at what time you arrived home on the night Mr. Forsythe was murdered? At about 7.15. Did you leave your apartment again that night? Yes, at 9 o'clock. Where did you go? To see Mr. Forsythe. For what reason? I realized I didn't love him. I wanted to return his presence and break off our engagement. When did you come to this decision? When I learned of his relationship with Miss Darling. Will you please tell the court the exact circumstances of your visit to Mr. Forsythe's apartment? I arrived at his apartment at about 9.30. I was just about to ring the bell when I noticed that the door was open. I went in and found Mr. Forsythe lying on the floor. Go on, please. For a moment, I didn't realize he was dead. I tried to turn him over, and then I saw the blood on the floor. He'd been shot in the head. What happened then? I don't remember. I was too upset. Somehow I got out of the apartment. Do you remember passing Miss Darling in the hall? No. What did you do after you left the apartment? I called you. You're my lawyer and friend. You're the only one I could think of. Thank you, Miss Hubbard. That's all. No questions. Defense rests. Any rebuttal? Yes. The people will call Mr. Logan. Your Honor, isn't this rather unusual? The defense attorney has made certain statements which I would like entered under oath. Well, in that case, I have no objection. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. State your name. John Logan. Be seated, please. Exhibit K, please. I show you the defendant's Exhibit K. Did you find this brooch on the murdered man, Count Edmund Talmacchio? No. Then why did you state in open court that it was found on him? Miss Judy Taylor of the Bulletin gave me the information. She brought it to my apartment last night. Is Miss Taylor in the court? Thank you, Mr. Logan. Will Miss Taylor please take the stand? Oh, just a minute. Your Honor, before Mr. Logan steps down, do you mind if I ask him a few questions? Uh, be seated, Mr. Logan. Mr. Logan, how long have you known the defendant, Miss Hubbard? Ever since we were children. We grew up together. Are you in love with her? Yes. What were your feelings when you learned that she was to marry Holly Forsythe? I was sorry to hear it. Because you were in love with her? Yes, and because I knew Forsythe's reputation. I thought she was letting herself in for a great deal of unhappiness. Why did you put Henry Randolph on the stand yesterday? Well, I wished to furnish the defendant with corroborating evidence as to her whereabouts at the time Forsythe was killed. Did you know that Randolph had a prison record? No. Now, Mr. Logan, as a lawyer, did you handle a case for Count Edmund Tomacchio? Yes. As a matter of fact, you got him out of a murder charge, didn't you? Yes. I'll show you a picture. 
Do you recognize it? Well, yes. Do you mind telling the court the circumstances under which that picture was taken? Well, it's a wedding picture taken when Cynthia Arno was married to Forsyth. Mr. Arno and I were also in it. How long have you known Mr. Arno? For a great many years. Thanks, Mr. Logan. That'll be all. Your Honor, I know it's a little out of order, but I'm somewhat confused. I'd like to ask Mr. Arno several more questions. The people will call Mr. Arno back to the stand. Sidney Arno. Mr. Arno, do you recognize these knives? No, I, I can't say that I do. Did you make them? No. Is Mr. Paul Hendricks in the courtroom? Now, Mr. Arno, isn't it true that Mr. Hendricks made these knives for you? Answer yes or no. The witness will answer the question. Yes. Yes, Hendricks made the knives, but not for me. He made them for Logan. I hated Forsythe, but I didn't kill him. Logan killed him. Forsythe deserved to die. If it hadn't been for him, my daughter would be alive today. I'm glad Logan killed him. Your Honor, with your permission, I think that I can fill in the rest of the story. Logan, you killed Forsythe, but you never expected that Lillian Hubbard would be charged with a crime. So you had to figure out a way to clear it. You found out that Randolph had a prison record. It was easy to bribe him to give false testimony. But you wouldn't take any chances. He might break down under cross-examination, or he might try to blackmail you later. So you went to Arno here and had him make these knives and the brooch. Then you hired Telmacchio to kill Randolph here in the courtroom. Now, to make absolutely certain that Telmacchio wouldn't talk, you phoned him last night and told him to meet you at the Ferry Street warehouse. You strangled Telmacchio. Then you planted the brooch on the body to leave evidence leading to Dolphin and Rita Dolly, because you knew the police would learn that they had a motive for killing Forsythe. Now, as for these knives, I picked this one up in the courtroom yesterday after Randolph was killed. And this one I found in Telmacchio's dressing room last night. They match perfectly. Now, I'm sure that that clears up everything. Get in there, Shane. It's a fine thing. They call this justice. <laughs> they solves the case and they give him 10 days for contempt of court. <laughs> I guess you're used to locking me in by now, eh, Sheriff? Yeah, only this time you stay locked in. Mike, Mike, I just saw the judge. You did? What about? Well, I thought if I told him all the details on how you solved the crime, that he might change the sentence. And he did. He did? Oh, boy! Hey, Sheriff, let me out of here! Mike, just a she second. Got... He, he changed the sentence, all right, but to... Uh, 60 days. 60 days? Hey, Judy, come here a second, will you? No, Mike, I have to... No, 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 look, I've got something very important to, to, uh, to whisper to you. Just no, come a little I closer. Got... I have oh, a story Judy, no, head. don't be silly. I'm not mad at you. Come here. Uh, I just want to get my hands on you. I don't want to tear a limb from limb. I love this Just let me get out of here. <laughs> I want to just crumple her a little bit. <laughs>